Bobby here from EVO. This round, I want to talk about the BMW 6 Series. To be precise, is the 640i or 650 if it is the V8 engine. Now, this is the current generation of the 6 Series. All right, and it is launched in 2012 by BMW. Why I'm reviewing it? Because I noticed the used car prices have gone down a lot in recent months because of all the uh, 1MDB, blah blah, whatever, the whole economy of Malaysia and all that. So the prices of the 6 Series, which is hovering about 400,000 last year, has come down to 300 and some desperate people are letting go of their cars at I don't know 260 270 especially the coupe because so many dealers are bringing in the coupe back then that they are now trying to offload their stocks okay now this car used to sell for about 860,000 back when it was first launched all right it is a very expensive car 860,000 if, if I'm not wrong so it comes in 640, which is the 3 liter twin scroll turbo, 6 cylinder engine, and the 650, which is the 4.4 V8 twin turbo. Alright, so let's go through the car. Now, design wise, this is one of the most beautiful cars on the roads now, now, nowadays. I mean, in my opinion, it is absolutely beautiful. Alright, I think you will agree with me. I don't have the, the prettiest rims, these are the stock ones. These are entirely stock you have the m sport which is which has a different bumper but i don't really like that bumper because it is as if bmw purposely designed it to not look as good as the m6 all right so let's have a run through now despite this being a cabrio it has a relatively spacious boot if i push this up as you can see here the boot is very spacious actually for a coupe or for a cabrio for that matter so what that does is when this is pushed down you will be able to open the top right what this does is that it's like an indicator that your luggage shouldn't exceed this height so that the, the, the cabrio can come down but if you need to load more luggage when you push this up you won't be able to activate the uh, cabriolet all right and the width of this is just nice for one set of golf club all right so let you have another look of on the exterior it's actually very pretty except this line which I don't really like that cuts across the bonnet but it has to be done so because the front bumper is plastic and you know pedestrian crash test blah blah and all that all right let's go in now this car is completely style over substance they rake the windscreen a lot is very slender in prof profile so what this does is that from my point of view i am five foot eleven you can see that the, the actual height of the visible area of the windscreen is actually very narrow so when you have this and the side mirror this part is like super tiny in terms of visibility so it's not the greatest when it comes to visibility all right, and I noticed the A pillar always blocks off the apex, so to speak, when I, you know, want to do some engaging drives. All right. So this is the interior, classic BMW. Back then, when this car was launched, it is lauded as the BMW with the, with the best interior build quality, because every single surface here is lined in leather, real leather. All this is leather wrapped. Look at all that. It's leather wrapped all across. Even the door panels and everything is all leather wrapped. Whether it's the best leather, no. In terms of stitching, it's nowhere near the quality of the new 7 Series. Look at it. <clears throat> the stitching quality and all that. It's not it's nice. It was it was the, the, the best built BMW. But I'm very sure, I mean haven't driven the 7 Series, the 7 Series has a much, much uh, higher quality cabin and that actually paved the way for new BMWs to come. 
but it's a bit tight for its size but this is a coupe nonetheless um, and it's comparable to even a Continental GT right so rear rear room I mean it's strictly four seater you can see there's only two seats there they extend this whole part to the middle but it's usable for adults for adults on a grand touring journey long drive it's all right okay in terms of specifications there are some six series that comes with the bang and olufsen sound system where when you're on the stereo this thing will rise up those are really really nice and costly as well i did went online and check an entire set of that bang and olufsen system if i were to order it and install it in this car it's going to cost me upwards of thirty thousand, which is no 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 that's the price of a bezar. Okay, in terms of um, cubby spaces, BMW were never really good at it, but this car is alright. Cup holders here. This compartment is huge. This thing, I hated it, but it's here. But it's big nonetheless. Um, door pockets. The door bins won't be able to fit a large bottle. You can fit it if you, you know, let out some air or whatever and squeeze it. But it's not the best sized or mold, mold the way they mold it right and it's not full length it doesn't open up full length but there is some space behind there which sometimes i'll find some stuff getting stuck behind um yeah that's the interior um specifications are great i mean when you when you are looking for the used cars in the used market and all that there are you can take note whether some of them comes with the HISAP display, which I have here, or whether it has keyless entry, and um, the Bang & Olufsen I mentioned just now, and whether it's iDrive is the full-featured iDrive. But I think this car has the full-featured iDrive for that era. All right, It is nevertheless a top-spec BMW. It's, it's a premium range of BMWs and you can tell from the interior the build is very very different from the usual 5 series or 3 series now in terms of driving of course the coupe will be a lot quieter than the cabrio because of I mean, sound insulation and all that is of course it's different that's a hard top right this is a soft top and you get in sound intrusions from you know there's a truck next to me now or motorcycles and all that but it's never to the point where it's annoying, it's not. But having said that, in the tunnel, in the tunnel, I'm not sure why, maybe it's the echoes or the, the, the ricocheting of the engine noise and all that. It is super loud in tunnels. It's just horrible. In the tunnel, it's, it is horrible. And I really have to raise my voice when I speak to the, my passenger. So that's the pros and cons. But you, you know, a lot of people say that, oh, you, you have a cabriolet, you know, someone might just take a knife and cut your roof. Well, anyone can take a shilling and scratch your car, right? Anybody can pick up a stone and smash your windscreen, your window and all that. So that's a moot point. And with a knife, even if you don't have a cabriolet, there's a lot of other things on your car that they can stab, right? or someone can just you know i mean this habit is a thing favored by i'm sorry motorcyclists but too many of you do that you know someone can just hit your side mirror and just break it so that's a moot point because i don't even need to discuss the part where people might vandalize your car because anyone can vandalize anything all right so far i don't have any problems with it i hope after this video comes out nothing will happen to it Nevertheless, um, in terms of the drive, now this is a soft car. It is not a all, an all-out sports car. You know, it is meant to be comfortable. It is meant to be. It is meant to drive long distances in style. All right. I'm not a very stylish person. I was at the Mercedes um, launch the other the other day where they launched five Cabriolets. Of course, it's two models. But there's three variants for the C-Class Cabrio and two variants for the SLC, which is crazy because not many people buy Cabriolets, but they launch five. So the VP of Mercedes Sales and Marketing 
Mark Rain was showing a picture of some really cool dude in scarf in a bright blue color in bright blue color glasses and he said that you know people who buy cabriolets are stylish they are passionate people you know they wear stylishly and all that oh, yeah I'm, I'm none of that all right i'm none of that i just like the fact that my roof can be retracted when i want it to be so that the wind can blow in i can hear the engine noise and all that um, i'll try and accelerate here and see whether you'll be able to hear the engine noise all right it sounds lovely. One forty, one fifty, one sixty. All right, time to break. But at slow speeds, I'm not sure why they they design it that way. I cross reference a lot of uh, UK or US reviews and and verified this. All of them said that at slow speeds. That was the first batch. Huh? Don't don't get it wrong with the 2013 facelift or 2014 version. The first batch, it is choppy at slow speeds. It almost behaved like the seven-speed dry clutch from Volkswagen in slow speeds. Now, as for the engine, it is a lovely engine. But again, when it comes to whether it's responsive or not on taking off, I mean, when the car is going, it's lovely, all right? But when it when it's when I'm trying to get out of a junction and all that, every single time, turbo lag. There is a, a half second turbo lag there, right? I'm not sure if that was caused by the transmission or the, the turbo, but it just lags that half second. Uh, because I have a very good reference point, I have another Audi, which is 3 liter supercharged. That car is the response of that engine and gearbox combination is crazy that car just boom just goes off like that the moment you prod the throttle so this car doesn't behave like that as well i mean of course it's a grand tourer maybe it's not supposed to do that but it will be great if it does so all right so reliability of course when it comes to you were thinking that oh i'm i can afford a 260,000 280,000 uh bmw 6 series now but will I be able to afford a car that was initially 850,000? Let me answer you that. Yes, you can. Why? We have to thank the fact that car makers now are sharing parts, transmissions, you know, almost everything they share across the board. So back then, back in the 90s, if you can buy a, an old 7 series or an old 6 series, doesn't mean you can or a series doesn't mean you can afford it because those are bespoke parts bespoke engines they are different and they cost but nowadays this is the same engine as the one in the uh, 135i or 335i okay this car is start stop early generation start stop but still it doesn't start too slow but i don't like it i always off it right um, efficient dynamics, I prefer the dynamics part. <laughs> efficient, okay, efficiency. This car is efficient. For a 3-liter force induction car, this car always uh, gives me about 120 to 150 km more than my Audi. My Audi, my 3-liter supercharged Audi can, can do about 410 km per full tank. This car can do about 550 to 580 km per full tank. Yes, the tank is larger, but it's only 5 liter more. So this car is way more efficient than, than my Audi. So the efficient dynamics part does, does play a role in that sense. I mean, BMW is a leader in that, in that area. So uh, consistently, BM, Audi and Mercedes, same engine, same output, BMWs will always consume less fuel. It's proven across two generations. I'm not sure about the new ones that are coming, but they are good in that respect. There's another car coming. And they are just being busybody, trying to figure out what this idiot is doing. Oh, fuck off. Can you fuck off? Alright, good. Let's try it again. That's the best thing I love about this car. Yes. 
I can open and close the roof while I'm going. Uh, up to speeds of 40 kmh actually. Yeah. And now I will close it. Can you see that? It takes quite a while actually. Yep. That's what I like about this car. Just as I finished filming that <laughs> the cabriolet open and close thing, look at what happened. Boom! Yep. Um, what are the downsides of owning a cabriolet? I would say at some point in the future, there might be a probability whereby during heavy rains, some form of leakage might happen. It might. Uh, come on, even your house would have leakages, right? From the roof or whatsoever. Um, to me, is it is it acceptable? It is acceptable. Yep. And just get it fixed. It's not hard to fix it. Um, but it's a trade-off. It is a trade-off that it just might happen because because it's a cabriolet, no matter how. All right, so my car is fine now, but I would, I'm not ruling out that might happen. Do I accept it? Yes. Is it worthwhile as a trade-off for being able to see the skies and all that? It is, I, I think it's worthwhile. Trade-off that I mentioned is just like, say for example, you stay in front you stay in a condo and you're facing the highway and inevitably, if you want that view, right, there will be noise from the cars traveling on the road, the road roars, the tire roars, everything ricocheting up to your condo. If you don't want your front glass doors, you sealed it with cement and concrete, you will have a very quiet living room. But if you want the glass door to enjoy the view, you have to live with the noise that comes from the highway. You have to live with uh, water seeping in from heavy rain. So, right, because you want the view. And that's a cabriolet. Yeah, that's my analogy. If you like what I'm doing, I hope you can help me share it or subscribe and Thank you very much. This is Bobby and I work for Evo. Thank you. The thing I want to show you is that, you know, when it comes to driving a coupe, when you need to get out of the car, you need to squeeze and all that, right? But when it comes to a cabriolet, if the roof is down, you get to step out of the car in super glamorous fashion. Push the seats up front and you actually stand up. That's how you do it.